Today we're going to go ahead and fix the most notorious problem on the FDRX7 transmission. That is the fifth gear synchro. Here's a visual why we're fixing this. So this is the power plant frame. You have your engine that the front of the transmission connects to. Then the back of the transmission connects to the power plant frame. And the other end of this connects to the differential. So everything is kind of held up by one linear piece. The problem is you start to put a lot of horsepower on these cars. The transmission starts to move side to side. What happens is you go, you're chipped in, you go first, second, you go to hit third, but the transmission moves a bit, and then you slam into fifth. And if you keep doing that, you really wear out that synchro, and then you get the notorious where you're trying to drive normally, and it grinds going into fifth gear, and it won't go in unless you're rev matching it. So that's why we've got to fix it. I am simply following instructions that I found online from the uh, RX-7 Club forum. The first step that you need to do, obviously, gets transmission out of your car. Mine's already been out. So make sure the thing is in neutral when you get your shift lever in there. Mine does not have the lever in, but I do know it's in neutral. You don't have to worry about taking all these sensors out or anything like that. But what you do need to do is we need to get this top cover off. So go ahead and loosen all of these bolts around. These all use a 14 millimeter. I used an impact with a swivel to make it easy. As you start pulling these bolts out, you're gonna notice they're very long except for the one bolt on the back right here. This one is super short. Easy to remember because if you tried putting the long bolt in here, it would not fit at all. So go ahead, yank all these out. Now that you've got your bolts out all the way around, this thing's gonna be pretty stuck on there because of the uh, sealant. I actually used a mallet and I've uh, kind of Beat the transmission around in strong points like where bolts would go into. It's going to be pull up, turn it a little bit, and then lift it straight out. Do not try to yank it straight up. It's not going to work, so just watch what I do. The reason why we had to twist that piece when we took it off is because of the shift lever set up right here. If you try to pull it straight up, you're gonna try pulling straight up on these things. So you have to twist it to get it out of here where my finger's kind of running through. So next step is we need to get these off. I've actually already gone ahead and on the inside of these, there are little roll pins that keep them in place. So what you need to use is a roll pin punch that fits in there just perfectly and go ahead and punch each one of those out. Be careful when you're knocking them out. You don't want them to fall down into the transmission. There's a couple open ports here that wouldn't be fun. Once they're out, go ahead, just work them off, like so. Just to make things easier on me, I'm kind of leaving my tools next to the parts that I took off to make reassembly easier. The next step is the speedometer gear. So it's got a snap ring on top and a snap ring on bottom. Use our snap ring pliers to remove the top one, set off to the side. Now go ahead, work this off the shaft. See, we can't get the snap ring off because there's a little woodruff key on the shaft right here that the speedometer uses to stay in place. Let's go ahead and remove that. Put inside the speedometer, that way you don't lose it. Go ahead and remove that snap ring. There's not really a good way to do it, but I saw this little lip right here, so I'm going to hit with the screwdriver and see if we can't. There we go. According to the manual, you want to mark where that bearing part came from. So you want to mark that's from the rear of the transmission. And then when we pull the bearing off, we're also going to mark the front side of the transmission. We also need to remove these two sea washers and put these into the rear bearing pile. This is where it kind of gets fun for most people because we have to get this bearing off. The problem is a traditional bearing puller is nowhere near long enough. So we're gonna go ahead and there are these little bolts right here. We're basically gonna remake this piece but we're gonna make it a lot longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that, cut out the new piece of metal, drill holes in, 
So that way these uh, will actually reach all the way down to here. Here's my solution to a bearing puller. I actually took my puller and added 10 inches worth of extension to it. So it should theoretically pop that thing right off. Go ahead and use the, the impact because the problem is if you try to do it by hand, it just wants to spin this thing. Ta-da! We're gonna do kind of the same thing on this side of the transmission. You can see uh, that this is crushed into the shaft. There's kind of a keyway here. So go ahead and use a punch to knock this straight. That's just a safety mechanism to keep the nut from spinning off if it was ever loose. So I'm pull that off and then pull this bearing off. I did use excessive force to move this bearing because I didn't have the proper tool and it did break the inside right here so this is obviously junk. Now this one and truthfully both these via real bearing puller you're putting a lot of excessive force on this outside ring not so much distributed over the whole bearing so when you're pulling upwards on it you're kind of pulling this outside part up and uh, it just it shortens the lifespan of the bearing and especially in my car, I'm going to have a lot of horsepower. Um, it's just not good to run these same bearings after you remove them. Because when you install a bearing, you hit it on the center and they don't break. But when you're pulling on the outside, it does shorten their lifespan. You probably don't want to crush this when you're setting it down, so set it down upside down. I'm going to remove the reverse idler gear and the uh, washer that goes with it. So there's a washer up here. And there's also a washer down there. So I'm going to set these down on the ground just like that so we don't lose the orientation of it. There's a retaining ring for the clips. Remove that. Now we can get these clips out. Now remember we marked on the ground the rears? These are going to be marked as the front. That way you can't mix them up. So now we need to move this. Now be careful, there's a steel ball. You can see a slot in this piece up here. I'm going to remove this. And there's that steel ball right there. There is our synchro. At this point you have 100% taken apart the transmission and uh, you're ready for the new parts. My synchro is actually not broken at all but I figure while I have the transmission out might as well do it. If you're wondering what the inside of an FD transmission looks like, there you have it. Not much going on inside there. You notice on the synchro there's three slots in it. That's so when you go to drop it over the transmission, it'll just kind of fall into place right there. And you'll notice when it wiggles like that. The synchro is now replaced. We're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. It's essentially the opposite of tearing it apart. Not much rock science to it. Just remember when you are putting it back together, clean all these surfaces. Now we didn't have to remove the bottom piece of the housing right here. Uh, but I just figured while the bolts are already out of it, it had enough time to flex and move around that I just wanted to take it off, clean the surface, put on the RTV on it. Remember, don't put too much on here. Just flatten it out with your finger, get a nice even coat. Make sure there's no oil or anything between that sealing surface. When you go to install these bearings, go ahead and find a piece of tubing that's the same diameter as the inside race right here. And you're going to use that to knock it on to the transmission shaft. Never press on this blue area or the outside area, you will ruin the bearing. One final piece you do want to replace, a couple of final pieces you do want to replace while you're in here is a new shift select spindle, which is this piece right here. It's simply just a couple bolts right here, pop that out, pop the new one in. And then the bushing for the shifter on these, they're plastic. Go ahead, get the aluminum replacement one. 
do that while you're in here. That way your shifting is nice and smooth with your new fifth gear synchro. Yes. We're going to be picking this up to push it over to the first and second area to move the finger down. It just makes it a lot easier to come in this back side. Get over to, to second gear and you just want to kind of do that quarter turn and come in to the fingers and come back that quarter and drop straight down. And before you start bolting it up thinking you're good, just make sure you can do gears. Go move around in neutral. If you can do third and fourth, I guarantee you can do every other gear.